Hello all, uh, welcome to my new series on functional safety in automotive sector. Functional safety is a general approach to make the car electronics or the car software safe. For this purpose, the international standards ISO 26262 contains the guidelines to protect road users, drivers or pedestrians uh, from injuries or mishaps caused by the faults in the vehicle electronics or the vehicle software. So we all know that uh, today uh, the road vehicle includes more and more software. Of course, the modern uh, software enables us to uh, incorporate useful new features into vehicles. And uh, let's say, for example, uh, about the adaptive cruise control feature or uh, future autonomous driving, etc. So I'm also uh, very much sure that you would know about few examples about the software uh, that could cause problem. Uh, softwares can harm people and endanger all the road users. For example, uh, if we take the similar ex same example of future autonomous driving, uh, you know, encountered with the uncontrolled acceleration. So, one simple software fault can lead to a tragedy. So, the functional safety, uh, FUSA, uh, defined by ISO 26262, uh, aims to reduce the risks of a software. Uh, to a very low level that the so society finds acceptable. So in this video, uh, I will give a very uh, condensed overview of functional safety and the standard. So let's uh, see the formal structure of uh, ISO 26262 Road Vehicles Functional Safety. Uh, the up-to-date second edition of the standard consists of 12 parts. So I shall explain how uh, you can safeguard the safety of your uh, products automotive products by using uh, these parts uh, together yes and uh, when it comes to the uh, 12 parts uh, we have 12 parts and the first uh, first part uh, the part one is vocabulary so the part one uh, defined vocabulary to achieve a common language and uh, interpretation of the content of other parts um, here in the part one you will uh, hear terms such as uh, uh, hazard risk uh, failures different failures cascading failures common cause failures safe state freedom from interference um, SL and uh, yeah, uh, fault tolerance time interval, fault detection time interval, fault reaction time interval, audits, assessments. So different terms and their definitions so that, uh, you know, when you move to the other parts, uh, you would be uh, very much aware uh, uh, on these terms and uh, definitions. So yeah, also I would suggest that uh, before you go into other parts, uh, just uh, go through the vocabulary first so that you will have a better understanding of all the terms and definitions in the other parts. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to the part two, uh, part two addresses functional safety management, functional safety uh, management. So according to ISO 26262, uh, you have to uh, work in a structured manner in order to achieve the functional safety. This includes that uh, you have defined and actually applied the development procedures. You also um, need a trained safety manager. He or she uh, will be in charge of planning and managing the safety activities and also create a so-called safety case. So this uh, uh, safety case includes a well-defined argumentation on your uh, uh, on why your system uh, is safe. So uh, uh, safety case, the document, the safety case is argumentation to prove that your system is safe, to prove that your system is safe. And uh, do not uh, ever, uh, you know, underestimate this task because um, you need an independent person who confirms your argumentation and uh, this uh, principle is mandatory to prevent misinterpretation and uh, cheating. So when it comes to part three, uh, it is the concept phase, part four product uh, development at the system level, part five product development at the hardware level, part six product development at the software level, uh, part seven production operation and decommissioning. Part 7 is production operation and decommissioning. Uh, part 8 supporting processes. Part 9 uh, SL and safety oriented analysis. Part 10 guidelines on ISO 26262. Part uh, 11 being semiconductor uh, guidelines. And part 12 which is newly added uh, which is on uh, adaptation of ISO 26262 motorcycles. So uh, part 3 to 7. Part 3 to 7 of ISO 26262. Uh, gives a guidance on different phases and disciplines from the early concept stage to the junkyard. Uh, 
so uh, the structure of different parts follows the v, uh, v shape of the system development life cycle so this safety development life cycle uh, follows the same v model v v shape uh, of the software development life cycle so they go hand in hand so when it comes to part 3 uh, part 3 is called the concept phase uh, this is a uh, early stage of vehicle and feature development uh, which is typically performed by the car maker or OEMs. So development starts with defining the scope which is called uh, the item in ISO 26262. So then we come directly to our first uh, real functional safety activity. So uh, that is uh, uh, the so-called hazard analysis and risk assessment. So uh, that is HARA. So with HARA or the hazard analysis uh, and the risk assessment, you judge the risk of, uh, I mean, the risk to the human life uh, if your item or the system is faulty. So based on this risk, you define a set of uh, so-called safety goals uh, for your item or for your system. So these goals uh, are higher level uh, safety requirements to be met. So the, the highest level of safety uh, requirements are the safety goals that, that needs to be met. So they all get an automotive safety integrity level or the SL. So and uh, it can be an SLA, SLB, SLC or SLD. SLD, uh, uh, you know, uh, being the highest uh, safety integrity level, and SL, uh, B, uh, SLA being the uh, SLA being the lowest. Yeah. So if you classify your uh, item as SLD, uh, if the risk is uh, risk uh, is on the highest level. Uh, take an example of adaptive cruise control, for example. So in this, you would uh, typically, uh, you know, be in SLD. And uh, if you consider an electronic uh, window lift where uh, you just risk pinching your fingers, so you would probably be in, uh, you know, classify this as an SLA. So the determined automotive safety integrity level accompanies uh, you for a rest of the life cycle. The majority of necessary safety activities for your item depend on the assigned SL. So higher the SL, a higher number of activities, uh, the work products, uh, lower the SL, lower number of activities and work products. Yeah. In fact, uh, under ISO 26262, uh, there are uh, more or less strict about you know, um, the, uh, you know, what you do and how systematically the things are done depending on the identified risk. So which follows uh, now is, uh, you know, uh, which we follow um, is that the safety goals must be addressed as one of the important aspect along with the development. So that's what the part four, the product development at the system level, the part, uh, you know, product development at the system level. So at the vehicle level, this means that based on the safety goals, uh, functional safety concept and uh, functional safety uh, requirements must be developed. Um, the purpose of this concept is to describe the principles of detecting faulty situations and how to react in such situations. For example, uh, airbag should be uh, deactivated as soon as the uh, you know, safety mechanism detects that it is no longer working correctly. So once the functional safety concept has been developed by the car maker or the OEM, so the various suppliers now come into play with the system development on the next level. Typically, the suppliers create a technical safety concept uh, on uh, you know for their area uh, of responsibility, which includes technical uh, safety requirements. The safety mechanisms are put in place to implement these safety requirements, and are often an interaction between the hardware that detects errors, software that determines the responses, and then hardware again that performs the response, such as de-energize a circuit. So. Uh, what you uh, require on a system level has to be implemented on hardware and software level. So uh, that's where the part five or uh, and the part six uh, that is uh, you know uh, of ISO two six two six two comes into picture. Uh, detail your safety requirement for both engineering domains, hardware and the software development. That is part five product development at the hardware level. Part six product development at the software level. So uh, remember the V model, don't forget to uh, consider the testing on all the levels. So testing has to be done at the system level, uh, hardware level, software level in all the uh, levels. Yes, especially uh, the test, uh, uh, test and validate the safety mechanisms uh, and uh, the functioning of your safety concept at the system, uh, system and the vehicle level before you switch on the uh, switch on the, uh, you know, assembly line that is the production or manufacturing. 
so you must therefore note that uh, you know iso 26262 contains a number of requirements and uh, methods that influence the usual development process at the system hardware and software level uh, in detail so in parallel to the development the safety analysis must be carried out to produce a precise understanding uh, of the causes and effects of the faults and thus safeguard the design so your responsibility does not end when the development has finished so that's why uh, we come to part 7 that is production operation service and decommissioning it's often necessary to check that uh, the electronics ha uh, have been produced and uh, installed safely repairs in workshop must not be uh, must not pose a safety risk ISO 26262 uh, requires planning accordingly. The field observation process is also intended to ensure uh, that defective uh, parts are examined to determine whether uh, there are deviations from the safety concepts and also uh, whether the you know, software needs to be updated and hardware uh, needs to be replaced or not. So far, uh, we have uh, made a quick run through the vehicle life cycle. So there's uh, some left to consider the remaining parts of ISO 26262. That is the part eight, which tells about this, you know, supporting uh, process processes. In fact, you will find a uh, very, uh, uh, you know, you will find a number of very different topics um, here, uh, which have to be uh, taken into account at various points in, uh, you know, in the uh, vehicle life cycle or the safety life cycle. For example, there's a configuration management. Configuration management is similar to uh, that uh, required under Automotive Spice, Automotive uh, Software Process uh, Improvement and Capability Determination, which tells uh, uh, how, uh, in which level, uh, what is the level of the capability of your software. Yes. And uh, coming, the next would be part nine. Again, SEAL and uh, uh, safety oriented analysis would be done here and coming to part 10 of the standard contains explanation for uh, better understanding uh, just a few uh, you know explanation uh, regarding this uh, standard uh, this part just uh, uh, it's just for information purpose but it's yeah very useful part 11 uh, gives a very detailed help on uh, use of semiconductors and microcontrollers in the safety related systems and finally the part 12 uh, that has been added specifically for motorcycles it essentially contains the information on how to carry out hazard analysis and the risk assessment uh, uh, way that makes sense uh, for bikes um, yeah okay that was an overview of uh, iso 26262 functional safety for automotive so what we have learned uh, so far um, so uh, uh, just as a summary um, functional safety prevents people from harm caused uh, by malfunctioning of electrical electronic components so that's the reason why this standard exists and why it's relevant for you if you are involved in the you no know, development of electronics uh, for vehicles the software for vehicles uh yes please keep in mind uh, the first point is that your development steps and efforts depend on SIL, uh, SIL exactly uh, automotive safety integrity level of your item uh, whereby the SIL is the result of the hazard analysis and the risk assessment secondly uh, yes develop a safety concept uh, with the safety requirements uh, do this uh, for your scope of responsibility such concepts and requirements describe how to detect faults and how to mitigate them yes the safety mechanisms should detect the faults and mitigate them the third key uh, point would be implement and test these requirements on all the levels the system software hardware e uh, and vehicle level each involved company must contribute here actually uh, the oems as well as the tier ones or the service companies so depending on their responsibility um, yeah beat beyond uh beat beyond beat on a vehicle uh, or the system hardware or uh, the software level uh, the fourth key point would be perform the safety analysis to understand the cost and the effects of the faults so yeah and also have an independent person to confirm the results or results uh, and uh, also uh, provide an argumentation for the safety uh, in the safety case so and also functional safety requires appropriate measures to ensure uh, the functional safety throughout the whole uh, you know uh, life cycle of the vehicles and uh, the last and the key lesson to remember always is there is no functional safety without the safety management so yes with this uh, you should have an idea of what functional safety in automotive is all about and uh, yes thanks for watching the video uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up yeah thank you